Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. The number one question we get this time of year is where do bass go in spring? And that is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how these fish move and transition, what you need to do to catch them, whether it's muddy water, whether it's clear water. We're going to talk about fishing in big reservoirs all the way down to fishing in little ponds so that you guys can adapt and catch fish this spring. Are you guys as ready as I am for some springtime bass fishing? It is prime time. This is the best time of year for you to get out there and break your personal best to catch a truly giant bass. So today we're going to break down the things that you need to know because if you've been on the water lately, you already know that your wintertime fish have vanished. And if the only thing that you know to do from there is to go up on those spawning flats that everybody talks about and start looking for the bass there, you're early and you already know they're not there either. So what do you do? Early spring, where do these fish go? Obviously they're doing something. They don't magically get from A to B. Let's talk about all of that. Let's start with big reservoirs, then we'll work backwards from there. So we know that in winter, these bass are setting up on offshore structures. They're on humps. They're sitting down in the, in the bottoms of the hollows. They're going to be sitting on deep walls. They're going to be sitting on pinch points, areas where that lake necks down so that they have a better shot of food coming past them. That's where those fish have been spending the winter. Now, all of a sudden, they're not there. Where did they go? And what do you do about it? Well, it's actually not that complicated. It's really simple. And the best part of all is you can use it to create patterns and you can repeat those patterns. So here's the deal. If you're on a big body of water, the first place that those fish are headed is secondary points. What does that mean? What is a secondary point? Well, out on the main lake, you have those offshore structures where those fish have been sitting. And then it's going to head into coves or creek arms, if you will. On a really big lake, you have these big, long creek arms. Well, those main points where those creek arms start or where the big main coves start, those are your primary points. The points right out there on the end. Once you head into a creek arm, all those little points that stick out, those are your secondaries. Those are the secondary points. And that's what we're talking about today. Those fish are going to come in off the main lake and start into a creek arm. And the size of that creek arm will vary lake to lake. We could be talking about fish moving into a creek that's only a couple hundred feet long on a small body of water. We could talk about fish moving into a creek that's 15 miles long on a big body of water. See, these fish are not afraid to cover ground in fisheries where they have to. They will make big moves. So as these fish turn off the main lake and into a creek arm, they're going to set up on the first secondary point that they come to. Because as you guys know, we just covered this in another video, the bass's primary motivation this time of year, two things, food and spawning. It's not time to spawn yet, so they're going to focus on food. They're going to eat as much as they can. They're going to bulk up. Best place to do that, secondary point. The reason why is that the bait fish are doing the same exact thing that the bass are. The bait fish are going to make a move to the shallows. So the bass get there first and they can ambush. This typically happens, this transition, when the water gets out of the 40s and starts into the 50s, the magic happens. Those bass get on the move. They're typically going to spawn in the low to mid 60s. Across the country, when your water temp reaches the low to mid 60s, you've got spawners. When your water temp hits the low to mid 50s, you've got fish on the move making that transition headed toward the pre-spawn. So first place you're going to check is that first secondary point inside of a big arm. If the fish aren't there, you're probably behind them. Go to the next one. Go to the next one until you locate fish. Then you can start targeting them. And we're, we're going to circle back around and talk about how to target them. Now that you're on fish, you have a pattern. Say those fish were on the third secondary point headed into a creek arm. It's not random. Go to the next creek arm, 
you're going to find them on that third point. Next creek arm, third point. Now you've got a pattern that you can jump spot to spot to spot to spot and build an amazing bag of fish as you go. Now, what causes those fish to make moves? Where do they go next? Well, as it continues to warm up and continues to transition, they're going to go to the next secondary and the next secondary and the next. That is the move until they get to the back. What makes one point better than another? Because they might not stop on all of them. They're gonna pass them, but they may not hold on one as long. They may get on one for a few hours, and the next one for a week, and the next one for two days. The difference is how viable that point is. You're looking for what we call anomalies, the things that are different. So if one point is fast tapering, drops to deep water, and the next one sticks way out flat, they're gonna spend more time on that one. If you've got one that's just barren on top, it's just bare mud, you go to the next one, there's lay down trees or there's rock on it. They're going to be on the one with the cover. Because again, it's all about catching food. These fish are feeding. So if they have places to ambush, that is a better spot. More of them are going to collect there as they transition. Now, that's all well and good. But what if your lake doesn't have a bunch of points? Or what if the weather gets involved? Let's talk about those two things. So let's back up, talk about a smaller body of water. Now your lake is more of a natural lake. See the ones that have those long creek arms, typically those are reservoirs. What if your lake doesn't have a dam? What if you just have a couple of minor points? Well, here's what we knew in winter. The fish were headed for the deep water. So if your lake is just relatively round and featureless, the fish were down in the deep end and they're gonna spawn for the most part in the shallow end. So again, they still have to get from A to B. What you're looking for is anomalies. If there are points, check your points. And this could be a featureless lake that's miles long. This could be a pond that's 100 yards across. In that pond, they're gonna winter on the deep side. They're gonna spawn on the shallow side. They're gonna work their way across to get there. They're gonna be setting up on rock if there's rock, ledges where it breaks off, where there's a transition that's fast. They're gonna sit on bushes. They're gonna sit on that trash can that some guy threw in the lake two years ago. Any piece of cover that they can sit on so that they can hide and ambush food is going to be key during this transition. And a bigger body of water that's featureless, again, they're gonna set up on the points. If you have a series of points, they're gonna use them. If you've got ledges, they're gonna follow the ledges back. There's an old creek channel. They're going to follow that up in there and they're going to set up on every anomaly along that creek channel. Now, there's an exception and that is weather. Weather can be a huge factor. We're facing this in the West right now. We are flooding all over the place. Guys all over the South, you're going through the same thing. Huge amounts of flood water running through. That changes things. These fish make this very metered transition. If the food is doing the same thing. If you have floodwaters come in, full-blown flood stage, what's gonna happen is that the fish are going to haul to the current. They're gonna skip the secondaries. They're gonna skip the anomalies. They're not gonna set up on, on random rocks and secondary points. They're gonna beeline to the back. That's where those fish are going. The reason why is that when you have that running water coming in, when you have that influx of water, that is delivering food. It's the same motive, but it's easier. They can just go sit in that running water. Food just comes rushing down to them. They don't have to go out and hunt for it anymore. So you will have fish make huge movements overnight when you have flood conditions. They're going to run right up that current. And if it's a huge river, they're going to head for that river. But if, they income, if there's incoming water along the way, you're going to have fish peel off on that stuff too. Because again, they're trying to feed. So they're not going to pass one food source to get to the next one. Fish are going to stack up on the first one, the second one, and then they're going to get to the back. Fish are going to start piling up in the back. But running water is key. Those fish are going to get up dirt shallow. We've talked about this. You guys already know. They're going to get up dirt shallow. They're going to set up. They're going to feed and they're going to be aggressive. Then once that settles down, if they're already in the back... They're just going to wait it out. They're going to start feeding back there in the shallows, wait till it's time to spawn. But if they were on one of those little feeder creeks along the way, 
They're going to pick up right where they left off, start moving again. Now, not every lake has these defined secondaries, even in big bodies of water. So if you come into a big cove and it's a big, you know, mile long transition back to that spawning area and you don't have some defined secondaries, there's no defined creek channel. Again, anomalies, but it can be minor. Keep that in mind. If you get out there on the water and you're looking for these big rock piles or lay down trees or brush and there's none of that stuff, little things will do it too. If you're looking at a shoreline and you see all say red clay, it's all the same. And then there's a little seam and it transitions to sand. They will sit right on that seam line. That's it. Just the change. They'll sit on that. And all of them will sit on that. It's amazing. So don't overlook even the smallest of anomalies if you're trying to find these fish. Now, how do you catch them? We know now how they're getting from A to B. So you can go out and look for them. And when you find them, whether that's on that first secondary or whether that's on the only rock you see headed back in each creek, you know how to find them. You know how to pattern them and repeat it spot to spot to spot to spot. How do you catch them? This is what we've been building you guys up for over the last month. We've talked to you about A-rigs. We've talked to you about cranking. We've done in-depth on spinner baits. We've talked chatter baits. We've talked underspins. This isn't random. These are your tools that you need in your arsenal going into this time of year to target those bigger fish. The key is bigger fish. Remember, this is your best time of year to catch a new personal best. The small fish are making the move and so are the giants. So you might as well be fishing for the giants. The males typically get there ahead of the females. So if you're on all little males, you might back it up a little bit. Check a couple spots back, see if the females are following. They're almost always gonna be hanging one behind. Now, we've covered a bunch of those things. There are a couple more that we're still gonna add for you. We are going to give you guys, here in the coming days, we're going to give you a full in-depth big swim bait approach to the springtime. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at jerk baits again, in-depth about springtime jerk bait fishing, because these are key patterns to trigger those biggest fish. But I want you guys to focus on power fishing first. Go out there prepared. Start shallow and work out. You don't want to assume that the fish are deep. Get up there shallow, check it with a square bill or a jerk bait or an underspin or a spinner bait. But if you find that the fish aren't on the bank and you're on that first secondary point, bring it out. Look five to 10, look 10 to 20 feet, look 20 to 30, 30 to 40 until you find fish. If they're not there at all, you go to the next one. But if you find that they're on that third secondary point and they're setting in 22 feet of water, I'm telling you, that's not random. They're going to be in all those spots. You find out that they're that deep. Well, all of a sudden you're eliminating things like the jerk bait and the square bill. And a lot of those baits just go away. Maybe you're able to get them on the underspin by getting down deep. But if they don't want it, then transition over. Go to the jig. And guys, I'm going to link you all this stuff down in the video description. We've been doing these in-depth videos, but I'm still going to give you the highlights. Like, the, the key jig, what weight and what color that I would throw if I was going to carry one. If they won't eat the jig, drop back to the worm. Start with a larger worm. If they won't eat that, you're going to drop down to a Ned rig or a tube until you get those fish to bite. When you have the pattern, run it. Run it over and over and over. But don't be married to it because, again, these fish are on the move. And you want to be prepared for that. So when they disappear, head farther back, find them again. And then again, don't immediately go back to that tube or that Ned rig. Start out trying to catch those bigger fish and then back it down from there. Guys, you can catch big ones this spring. This is your year. We're excited for you. We're here to encourage you. And we want to hear about your success. Leave us a comment. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and we'll talk to you soon.